Uh, so I'm going to be talking about the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer network, mostly about how it affects mining in practice actually today, not in theory, real measured results. As you can tell, the results were probably not great from the subtitle. So these are, this is data I took from, you can't hear me? Okay, right here. This is data that I took from Lightsword. He's a Bitmain warranty and runs a pool. He also collects a bunch of statistics about all the pools stratum latency. So this is how long it takes the pool to switch the block that they're mining on relative to all the other pools. As you can see, there's BTC China, Ant Pool, F2 Pool, and that one at the end is my pool that nobody mines on, but is very fast. <laughs> Sorry, yes, that's in second. Bigger is worse. I'll get to that a little later. The very last one. So this is the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer network block switching latency. This is not strata mining pools. This is actually nodes on the network today measured from the first peer to tell you about a block to other peers on the network telling you about that block too. Mostly this means the peers have downloaded, verified, and decided to forward to everybody else. As you can see, there are very few peers that are able to produce blocks within the first five seconds. There's actually only about 30 on the network today. <clears throat> Questions will be answered later. So this is broken, I've broken them down by the average block size. This is a bucket, this is a, heris this is a histogram for blocks that are under 10 kilobytes. The vast majority of peers are able to get the block, verify it, and forward to other peers within five seconds, which for a global network is incredibly ridiculously fast. But as the average block gets bigger, this starts to change pretty quickly. That's 300 kilobytes approximately, 500, 800. At this point, the vast majority of the network takes more than five seconds to even get the block, which means they are no longer even remotely competitive as a miner. So this is for the maximum size block. It's a histogram of the latency to get the block. As you can see, there are virtually no peers who end up with the block in under five seconds. So the question is, why does this really matter? And the answer is pretty simple. The higher your block switching latency is, the higher your orphan rate, which is actually your stale rate, but terms are screwed up, which means it costs the pool money. But there's one detail here that's a little different. So. Actually, for pools that are more than 50% of the network hash rate, as their stale rate goes, as their latency to switch goes up, they cost everybody else money. Their profits go up by not telling anybody else about their blocks. They are effectively 51% attacking the network at that point, maybe on accident even. On that note, validationless mining. This is where pools connect to other pools' stratum endpoint and simply copy the work that that pool's giving out. They don't validate anything, they don't have headers, all they're doing is trusting the other pools. This results in very, very low switching latency. But it also means that they are one pool pretending to be many pools. The, this is the current rough hash rate for the network. At the top is Ampool, Discus Fish, and BTCC. As you can see, they are above 50% of the network hash rate today. And they all are validationless mining. They are effectively a single pool operating at 62.5% of the hash rate, and Antpool currently delays 
relay of blocks by enormous amounts of time. I've seen 20 minutes on the network in practice. Which practically means they end up costing everybody else in the network today who's mining at least half a percent of their revenue. Not their profit, their revenue. Which definitely is a problem. Okay. Anybody have questions? <laughs> is that it? Yes. That is it.